What is the difference between origins and insertions? So good morning, good afternoon. My name is Hayley and I'm from Parallel Coaching and today I'm just going to talk to you through the difference between what an origin and what an insertion is. Now I've done this recently on a webinar and I got a really good response and that's because I use a it's literally just a really quick acronym to help you remember where your origin is and where your insertion is and how that relates to things that are definitely on your body so that you're able to kind of take your body into your exam with you which means it feels like you have the answers sitting there ready to go and that's really the key for remembering your origins insertions and anything muscular when you're about to walk into anatomy and physiology exam because Although you can't have your manual with you, you can't have me talking away in your ears with you, you can have your body with you in an exam. And if you remember it in relation to your body, it will help you hugely when you get there. So um, that's kind of the, the fundamentals of this system. And it will be a really nice quick system for us to head through. So the acronym is HOJI. H O J I. Now, as you can see on your screen, um, the H stands for heart. So, surgeons is you first of all need to know, get a really good picture of the muscle itself. So, like you can see with the bicep that we've got on the screen at the moment, and also we've got the the calf on the screen as well. But if you look at the bicep, you know where the heart is in relation to the bicep. That's the first thing to draw on your image. So you go right. I know. That that the bicep is here and I know where my heart is as well so you heart then you find the origin now the origin is going to be the bit that's closest to the heart where it starts so if you've got a really good image it will help you remember it but remember it's is it supposed to be crossing that joint or not so it should be the origin is going to be uh, before you get to the joint okay that it crosses so for example on the origin for the bicep here it's right at the very top um, of of the shoulder joint and then you've got the joint uh, down at the elbow that's your your third part of hoji and then you've got the insertion point which is going to be where it attaches onto that's the bit furthest from your heart now origin is the closest bit to the heart insertion is the furthest part from the heart they're the really important key bits to remember in terms of the differences because what you want also is for that origin insertion must be separated by the joint if you find that the origin insertion don't cross a joint then we're in trouble something's gone wrong because that muscle's not going to be able to cause any movement the idea obviously is that the muscle's going to get shorter and it collapses a bit like an accordion instrument so as that collapses it pulls the, both the origin and insertion closer together, which means the muscle gets shorter, which means the joint moves. So we need the origin insertion either side of a joint. The origin is the side that's closest to the heart. And I'm going to go through a few particular examples as we look through them now. So first off, let's look at the hamstring group. So hamstrings are an area that people kind of get really stuck on in relation to their exams. And they kind of overcomplicate it a little bit. So first one, let's start with the biggie. This is the bicep femoris. Now, you all know what a bicep is because you've got one in your arm and we use it for most things when we're kind of explaining about muscles. It's the easiest one for us to talk about. You've definitely done a bicep curl before. Now, this is the bicep of your leg. Femur is, is the um, bone in the leg. So remember, it's bicep femoris. So bicep of the leg. That's the best way of remembering it. Now, when you are looking at this nice clear image, first of all, find where the heart is. Well, once you found where the heart is north of your hamstring, then you need to find the origin. So looking at this image, you know that the, the origin is the ischium, and that's sitting right on your sits bones. So if you're sitting down right now, you are resting on your ischium. That's that little bony bit right under your bum. Then or another origin is also the posterior surface of the femur. So you can see like actually attaches down on the back edge of the femur as well. Okay, now the joints that this one crosses is it crosses two joints. It crosses at the hip and also at the knee. 
so you do need to know how many joints are we crossing here because that's going to tell us then when we where we now need to put the insertion so if you think the origin is up at the ischium but then i've got to cross two joints i know it's now got to be below the knee now in this case it's the head of the fibula and you can see it just attaching literally down here on the head of the fibula fibula is the smaller bone on the lower leg now because it crosses two joints, it makes it quite unique. And you can see that Hoji actually has two J's in it now. So that's okay. You can change those rules as you head through. But hopefully that will help you start to remember it. Now, another way of remembering the action of this muscle in particular is you've obviously done a leg curl before. So imagine a seated leg curl machine. You're sat on this leg curl machine and you've got a good weight on there. You can really feel it. And you're literally... Um, contracting your hamstring as you do so now the main thing that happens is your knee flexes doesn't it so that the hamstring shortens and your knee flexes but if you've got a really good weight and depending on your control levels as well you'll feel your hips start to try and lift up out of the seat and that's because your hips are trying to extend which is the other role of this hamstring of the bicep femoris it's trying to extend the hips as you flex the knee and that's a good way of remembering what two joints it crosses and what the action of that joint is. Awesome. Okay, that's bicep femoris. We're going to use that same principle as we look through for the semimembranosus and semitendinosus, which are the two other two of the hamstring group. So, semimembranosus. I remember this like a membrane is um, is sort of wide and thick, um, so it's uh, sort of a, a wide muscle. So the membranosus is wider than the tendinosus, which we'll get to in a second. Now let's again go. Where is the heart in comparison to the hamstring that we're looking at? So the semimembranosus, you know, it's very north of it. So the origin is the next thing we need to look at and again where the origin is at the ischium so remember the ischium is the sits bones but where does it attach now it still crosses two joints still flexing the knee extending the hip and its insertion this time is on the tibia so the tibia is the bigger bone on the lower leg and you can see it on the image here where it joins it right down here that's on the tibia so that's your semimembranosus. Remember, membrane is a slightly wider um, compared to the tendinosus, which we'll get to in a minute. Crosses two joints, exactly the same. Origin at the ischium, insertion at the tibia. Awesome. Next one. Let's keep going. So semitendinosus, other than the fact that it is thin like a tendon compared to the membrane let's go back so you've got membranosus which is thick and sort of wide and then you've got the tendinosus which is a little bit thinner in terms of how it looks a little bit more stringy like more like a tendon so other than that it attaches exact same places origin is the same its insertion is the same as the semimembranosus easy group those two together so you know that if it's a semimembranosus or semitendinosus it's ischium to tibia Perfect. Again, crosses two joints. Spot on. Straightforward. Okay, let's apply that and now look at something a little bit more complex, something that's got multiple origins. And this is the gluteus maximus. And we can't have a video go past where we've not talked about the butt muscle. So let's have a little look at this one. So we know where the heart is in relation. You always start with the heart. Yep, got that one. Now remember, the origin is going to be the point that is closest to the heart. So looking at your image you know that this is the bit that's going to be um you can see it on the left hand side of this image but it's the sacrum the coccyx and the posterior surface of the ilium now sacrum obviously and coccyx are part of the spine so that's much closer to the heart than the femur is so we know that we can class that as the origin not the insertion it's the closest bit to the heart then it crosses across one one joint and the joint that is crossing is your hip now, we know that the glutes are pretty epic at what they do, but because they have such a fan shape of or where from the uh, multiple origins, it means that they can do quite a lot as they cross that one joint. So it can extend the hip and it can also laterally rotate the hip out. Now, if you think about extension of the hip, so just imagine now looking at this image that this is your butt. Um, doesn't look quite the same as your butt right now but you've uh, have an imagine that this is your butt now imagine that you've got 
um, one finger on the origin and one on the insertion and you want to squeeze both of those together so that the muscle fibers get shorter. Now imagine that and in order for that to happen you almost have to kick your leg backwards or you need to rotate it out and that's because as those muscle fibers collapse like that accordion then the muscle gets shorter and as a result you get movement at the hip. So remember we're crossing the joint that is the hip. And the insertion point is the femur, goes right in onto the, the long bone of the femur and also onto the iliotibial tract, which is the IT band all the way down the side. Right, one more for you in relation to sort of leg muscles and remembering your origins and insertions. This one's going to be the TFL, the tensor fasciolata. So it's got a funny name. Easiest way to remember it from sort of my point of view is that it's got the word fascia in it. And fascia basically is connective tissue. And you can see that this one on the TFL, it, most of it is connective tissue, isn't it? It's still part of it, but a lot of it is the tendon. And remember, we're talking about the origin insertion where the tendon joins the bone. So it doesn't matter that the muscle itself is quite small and only up here. It's where the tendon joins the bone that's important. So we know where the heart is, that one's done. Then the origin is on the crest of the ilium. So the ilium, again, is that fan shape, um, bone-like structure that you've got um, on your pelvis. So it goes across that fan of the pelvis, and that's where the origin is. And then it crosses the joint at the hip, just one joint, and that's the hip. And then it inserts right down on the edge of the tibia. So we mentioned the tibia earlier, the longest, the, sorry, the larger bone of the lower leg muscles. But we're talking about lateral superior edge. Now, for some reason, these words really screw people over. They don't like them. They sound a little bit too uh, clinical for a lot of people. So just take it easy, one step at a time. Lateral means out to the side. So um, like when you do a lateral race, out to the side, okay? Then you've got superior. Superior means on top of. So if you think of a, a, a superior commander in the forces or something, they are the highest level they can be or a, a superior executive in, in a management position. They are the highest they can be. So superior means the top edge. So you've got lateral superior, which means it's going to be at the side, but at the top of the tibia. And that's just wording for what you can see on this image as basically being the top and the side of the tibia. Perfect. Now, based on where this attaches and uh, sort of where the origin and insertion is, it does a lot of different things. And that's because of the flexibility of where it's uh, situated. But it does actually cross two joints. It crosses at the hip and at the knee. And that's because it also cross, you can see that it the tibia is obviously below the knee so um it flexes the hip which is the pushing of the hip of the leg backwards kicking backwards it abducts the hip which is the side sort of lateral lift of the leg um, and it also immediately rotates the hip so that's turning the, the foot inwards and then it also stabilizes the knee and it can get really really tight this muscle and and the connective tissue in runners in particular because of these actions that they'll be doing on a regular basis and because of that knee stability that they need so tensor fasciolata it, or tfl often gets really really tight and you'll often hear people foam rollering this and that's because they're they're using it as a knee stabilizer um more than they uh, or, or with a huge amount of volume or impact, put it that way. Um, and that can cause a lot of tensions. So uh, that's why the TFL gets particularly tight, but based on the fact that it crosses two joints. So I've sort of gone through, to, uh, well, quite a few went through hamstrings, which was bicep femoris, um, semimembranosis, semitendinosis. We then done glutes and then we done tensor fasciolata. So you've had a good tour around all of your lower body. And I'm not going to um, sort of sugarcoat this. Really, it's a case of you now need to spend that same amount of time on every muscle of the body. And if that takes a bit of time, which it will do, then you need to kind of spread it out within your learning plan so that you allow yourself time to learn each little nugget of information, each muscle. So that you go, OK, right, I'm just going to do the um, 
the lower leg today or I'm just going to do the arms today. I'm just going to do the chest. Break it down so that you know what you're going to do on each day and you allow yourself time for all this information to stick in your head.